Uh, well, welcome everybody to the opening uh, webinar that uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, the backup functions and start with the DSS v6, uh, how to use backup functions with iSCSI targets, USB drives, volume groups, and tape drives and including tape libraries. Today's July 15, 2010. I'll be talking. This is Todd Maxwell, Technical Sales, and we have Rob Marcus and Tom Simon as well, additionally to the opening team. Uh, the webinar will be recorded, so you'll find all our demos and recorded webinars at our page under the link below. So please visit us, and I'll also point you in the right direction at the end of the webinar, showing different areas of our website where you can obtain these. The presentation is muted in the background to prevent background noise, and as always, you'll be able to listen to the presentation. And if you look at the chat message on your network session, you'll see the dial-in number that uh, is there available in case you want to hear via by phone. Uh, questions are always welcome during the presentation. On the right side of the net viewer session, you'll see a, a chat window. And in the chat window, there is the ability for you to ask questions. Now, what I'll be doing is I'll be pausing in certain segments of the webinar to be able to answer some of your questions. So what's new with the new DSS v6? Well, recently we had a build of 44.52 and now 45.50. Uh, what's new is the initial wizard settings that we've implemented. So what this does is it allows you to, uh, when you update, make sure that your password, your the time is set properly, the IP addresses, and also for the ports for accessing the GUI as well. Uh, we instituted the new Samba version, 3.5.2, and new antivirus, version 0 0.96. Of course, we all know that the, it's using Clam AV. We also instituted the support for volume replication with logical volumes up to 16 terabytes and iSCSI failover with logical volumes up to 16 terabytes as well. Keep in mind that you can have many 16 terabyte logical volumes for NAS, iSCSI, and Fiber Channel. We now have support for 8 gigabit Fiber Channel for the QLogic HBAs in initiator and target mode. Only the QLogic has the capability for target mode currently today. We also have a new communication failover nodes on the using unicast. Previously, we were using multicast. And also the new setting, the default gateway on the console and also in the GUI interface. We additionally added the new static routing in the GUI. That's also in the network setup section. And we also are now able to add additional ping nodes. So you can have up to five or more. Volume replication tuning tools are now available in your console tools in Control-Alt-W for the hardware options in there. Uh, updated, we did uh, the CA Bright Store 12.5 support, and of course, the Apple Talk Filing Protocol, Netitalk 2.1. Uh, during the end, I will show you on our website where our libraries contain the data knowledge base, data sheets, um, white papers, case studies, and most importantly, the how-to resources. In there, you'll find a plethora of information of how to do replications, backups, snapshots, and other material that is important to you. So here are the links for you to refer to, and we'll talk about that at the end. And that's about it. And then next webinars will be planned, and they'll all be emailed to you for future webinars that we're going to have, and that way we keep you up to date. All right, let's go ahead and go right into the, one of the DSSs I want to talk about. Uh, before we go, I want to show you that in, we previously talked about the library. In the library, we have a lot of how-to resources. And here you'll see we have backup functions. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. If you click on any one of these, uh, you'll be able to download immediately right into a vast amount of documentation, uh, how-tos, how to set up, how to configure. And here you can see we, we talk about directly attached for tape libraries, tape drives, uh, be able to back up to another RAID controller or a RAID array. Uh, you can back up to a dynamic volume where you're able to create it from a USB drive, a SATA drive, or an ATA drive. So here you'll have uh, drawings, designs, descriptions. Uh, so there's a lot of information that you might want to look at in the backup sections from the how-to libraries. And here you can see there's just a lot of information for you to help you get you to where you need to do your backups. 
If you notice, I have the DSS uh, source server right here on my left, and of course I created DSS destination um, in back over onto this system. And of course we have now a, another server that has the tape libraries, so we can talk about the tape libraries as well. In the version that I am currently using is the 4550, and that is the version that we are um, using for the 64-bit mode. <clears throat> now, what we're going to talk about is the backup configurations. One of the first things we really want to get to in the beginning is we want to be able to talk about you know, different ways of backing up. Uh, we talked about the, how to back up to tape. We'll go into that and how to tape libraries and tape drives. Also, how to back up to a RAID array or a USB drive or even to a logical volume. You can even back up to an iSCSI target. And when we start off, we're going to use, let's say, a USB drive. On this system right now, currently, that I'm using, uh, Unit S003 is a 460 gig drive that's a USB drive that's attached to the DSS server. And we are going to make this one available as a dynamic volume. So this allows me, and only the USB drives can be used as a dynamic volume. So if you try to use it as a volume group, it will not, and you'll be presented with the message that you just currently saw. So here we're going to apply for the new uh, dynamic volume. And basically what this is kind of doing is kind of virtualizing a tape library. So you'll be able to, in the end, be able to take this 460 gig dynamic unit and be able to carve out uh, various different types of tapes. So you can have a 100 gig tape and create another 100 gig tape or the rest of it just for, let's say, for other tapes. So here on the left you see the dynamic unit, 00, and you can have many, by the way. Um, and here you'll see that there's obviously nothing in here. So what we're doing is presenting the dynamic volume uh, for you to explore your backup uh, jobs that you have created before and also the files. Now if we go to the volume group here on the left, one of the first things I created was a logical volume. Uh, you'll see this here. It's a NAS volume, uh, 20 gig. That's where I am storing my data. And I've created a, another logical volume about 4 gig, you can make it larger. Uh, this is where I'm creating the backup database. And the reason why I do this is I, I would like to separate the data and also the backup database because we're going to use our built-in backup functionality to be able to perform all these backup features. So you want to create a separate logical volume solely used for your backup database. And we'll go into that and show you how that's done. So once you create a NAS logical volume or many NAS logical volumes, then you can create a, another logical volume for your database. I've also created a, um, another NAS volume to do restores. So we can restore to that uh, NAS volume. So you can also create another volume group to do restores. You can restore back to your existing shares, maybe possibly back onto the LV00 where you first were doing the backup. And finally, with all backup functions, we have to use snapshot. And this is very important because the backup is really not backing up directly from that NAS share. What happens is the backup calls the snapshot. The snapshot then takes a snapshot of that NAS logical volume, and then the backup proceeds to back up from that snapshot. This provides uh, better efficiency instead of, and performance instead of having the backup to back up each file, which can slow the system down. So this is why you have to have a snapshot. Now, you're probably off with a lot of questions, how big are, should my snapshot be? Typically, uh, anywhere three times the amount of writes or changes you think are going to happen. So if you think in a daily basis you're going to have 20 gigs of new data being written or changes, then you probably want to make a 60 gig um, snapshot volume. Or you can go anywhere between 12, 10 to 12 percent of the total size of the logical volume. So if you have one terabyte, let's say 120 gig snapshot will be sufficient for a long time. So, and you can also create many snapshots. Uh, for this purpose, I'm just going to use this snapshot. And it's directly, if you see, it is assigned to this logical volume. Because you want to have your snapshot assigned to where 
your backup is going to back up the data, not where the database is at. So, and also you want to make sure that it's not for your restore. You want to make sure that the snapshot is assigned to the data where you'll be backing up the data for that logical volume. So you can create, through this action, many uh, functions here. Obviously, uh, you can create a NAS and a snapshot and also iSCSI and fiber channel. And then here's where you assign the snapshot to the logical volume. Now let's go ahead and configure our, go over the process of how to configure the backup. Uh, first, we want to make sure that we have all the file protocols that we wish to enable. For this purpose, we are going to use Samba and Sys for basically just general purposes for this webinar. Uh, we also have backup functionality such as backup agents for Veritas, RetroCline, Byte Store, and Backup Exec. Uh, that Backup Exec is also for the latest Backup Exec for 2010 with Symantec. We also have NDMP capabilities as well for your backup. Now our internal backup function is located right here on the bottom of the NAS settings of the GUI. So if you go to Configuration NAS Settings, you'll see this here. Any questions that you may have or inquiries about any particular function of our software, you'll be able to view this right here, and immediately you come up with an online help manual.